you need this book, or rather your doctor needs this book. If you are on any medication for heart disease, your doctor needs this book to help you get off them. Now, are you suffering from side effects of beta blockers or side effects due to beta blockers? Beta blockers are a series of drugs they usually lower to lower the heart rate. They can help decrease the feelings of anxiety, but they can actually cause anxiety as well. And beta blockers are basically things like atenolol, propanolol, bisoprolol, anything that ends in OL, basically. So beta blockers, beta blockers, okay. And I am gonna go through common side effects, um, the long-term effects of taking them as well that you might not have until you've been on them for 10 or 20 years, and you may not even realize they're side effects to beta blockers, and the nutrient deficiencies that they cause, which probably explain to an extent some of the long-term side effects, and then what to actually do. So beta blockers, so basically anything ending in OL is probably a beta blocker. So here's my cheat note, cheat sheet, because there's a lot to remember. And this is all from a textbook on, well, integrative cardiovascular medicine. Okay, so beta blockers, I already explained what they are. So I'm just gonna list some things, okay? And if you want this list of everything that's going on, then just put please down below and I'll make sure that we message you. So, um, Common short-term side effects to beta blockers. So things that can come on fairly quickly within a just, you know, few days or a few weeks of taking them. Nausea, vomiting. You know, a lot of these are very common um, and you stop it and they go away. Diarrhea, fatigue, dry mouth, dizziness, visual disturbances, headaches, sexual side effects, dyspnea, so problems breathing, insomnia, nightmares, and arrhythmia. Even though they can actually be given to help control heart rhythm, they can actually cause it. Now, long-term effects. So these are things that you may not, they may not happen at first. You may be on them for years with no side effects whatsoever. Depression, sexual side effects, decreased HDL, that's your good cholesterol going down. Fatigue, blood glucose imbalances, i.e. the beginnings of and leading to diabetes. Um, increased risk of type two diabetes, and then increased risk of myocardial infarction and stroke. So basically, you're given on a beta blocker to help decrease your blood pressure, to help decrease stroke and heart disease, but long-term side effect can be increased risk of heart attacks and strokes. And one of the reasons that beta blockers can have these long-term side effects is because they actually cause deficiencies in a number of things. And there are three big ones that are in the textbook, okay? The first one is a vital nutrient to every muscle inside your body, including your heart, and that's called coenzyme Q10. And you need coenzyme Q10 to create energy in your body, so all your muscles need it, your heart needs it, your brain needs it. And if you have low levels of coenzyme Q10, and there's two other things that are really important, especially if you're a man, so stay tuned. Okay, so coenzyme Q10 deficiencies can cause hypertension, yes, High blood pressure. So a drug you're taking to stop high blood pressure can cause a deficiency in something that can cause high blood pressure when it's low. Congestive heart failure, muscular fatigue and weakness, joint and muscle aches and pains. It can actually cause um, a muscle disease called a rand, randomyolysis, I can never say it. Decreased cognitive function, memory loss, uh, gingivitis, so gum disease, arrhythmia, already mentioned that, imbalanced immunity and insulin resistance and impaired glucose tolerance. So one of the ways to actually help decrease the long-term side effects of beta blockers, if you're finding there's no short term, there's only an upside to you now, then why not talk to your doctor about taking coenzyme Q10 because it can actually decrease the risk of the coenzyme Q10 deficiency and long-term side effects that make beta blockers useless in the long run i.e. so it can make them useful in the long run. Now, next one is beta blockers can call a depletion of something called melatonin. Now, melatonin is vital for relaxing and decreasing the stress response in your body, and you need to make melatonin in your brain at nighttime to help you 
fall asleep and stay asleep and get restful sleep. And it's also, and um, we know in cancer patients, we know that melatonin is also really useful helping you build muscle as well because it seems to stop the stress response in your body. So low melatonin can lead to sleep disturbances, insulin resistance and impaired glucose tolerance. It's come up again. Cardiovascular problems, imbalanced immune system, increased cancer risk, increased oxidative stress, oxidative stress in the brain and decreased seizure threshold. So more likely to get um, uh, epileptic seizures basically. So again, really, really important that if you're on beta blockers, that you do things to really look after your sleep and you do other things to help make sure that your melatonin levels don't deplete because as you age, sleep problems get worse and that then causes lots of other problems as well. Now, last one. Now this is, this is important for women as well because women produce this as well and it's very useful especially as you go through menopause and that's testosterone. Yes, women make testosterone too. So what can low testosterone cause men? low, well, loss of libido, insulin signaling, signaling problems. So again, diabetes, type two diabetes, sleep disturbances, thyroid imbalances, loss of muscle mass, joint muscle aches, increased cardiovascular problems, mood imbalances, memory and cognitive decline, weight gain, and increased incidence of osteoporosis. So these are the long-term effects of beta blockers. The longer you're on them for, the more likely you're gonna have deficiencies in coenzyme Q10, melatonin, and testosterone, the more likely you're going to develop all the things that basically come on more with old age anyway, but you'll get them quicker unless you start looking after your lifestyle, which help keep these other things higher. So the real answer is actually trying to find what is the actual cause of your high blood pressure or why are you taking beta blockers in the first place? What can actually be causing the problem? And are there alternatives? And so very often it's about doing things that actually help naturally lower your heart rate that keep things under control so that's looking at things like breathing techniques that can help you control stress and as you get better at them it helps you control the stress long term getting fitter exercising in the right way the right nutrients can also help decrease the stress and the tension and the anxiety in your body hawthorn for instance has been shown to be very very useful as an alternative to beta blockers hawthorn berry extract but talk to your doctor um, before doing something like taking a herbal because sometimes herbs interact with other drugs so you want to check before you do something like that. But basically we have breathing techniques, visualization, meditation, mindfulness, walking, chewing gum, um, cold showers, especially cold water on the face, getting fitter and vagal nerve stimulation. These are all alternatives. Okay, But when you actually combine this with a whole lifestyle approach to actually understanding why you've got high blood pressure in the first place, you can decrease your need for beta blockers and then you don't need to find the natural alternatives to beta blockers because you found the underlying answer and your problem is solved. So if you like this list, put please down below uh, and we'll be happy to send it to you. Okay, be well, be magnificently healthy and spread the word, um, share this video if you know someone on beta blockers, whether they've got side effects now or they've been on it for years and they've got diabetes and other problems and no one's put the two together. Be well.